Okay, so I've got a 50 p coin here. It's either got heads or it's got tails. So it's just a standard coin with either heads or tails. Now the last six times that I've tossed this coin, it's actually landed on tails. So does this mean on the seventh time of tossing the coin, it's no more likely to land on heads? It's landed on tails six times in a row. Surely this seventh toss must land on heads. Or let's say I've been doing some casino offers with my match betting and I've been accumulating lots of positive EV, so lots of positive expected value with every offer that I've been doing and I've actually been going on a downswing and I've actually lost a hundred pounds on a downswing. Does this mean that I'm no more likely to get a big profit to compensate me for this big hundred pound downswing that I've been taking and these lots and lots of continuous losses that I've been having with my casino offers. Now let's use a real world example of what I'm trying to get across here. So let's say I'm driving to work and I see four red cars all in a row at some traffic lights. Now all these four red cars miraculously are also all the same make. So I just go about my day, I carry on with my day as normal and then let's say I get to work and I, I find 10 pounds on the floor as I'm walking into work. And then when I get into work, my manager says, I've got a promotion, I've got a pay rise. It's literally the best day. Everything that could go right, does go right. Could it have been that those four red cars, all of which were the same make, could have been some sort of lucky omen which helped me get all this luck and all this good fortune on this particular day. So what I'm trying to get across here is that human beings love correlations and we love patterns and we love them so much, we love patterns and correlations so much, we very often find them when they're not actually there. So if I take the, uh, the coin toss that I was talking about earlier, each time I toss a coin there's a 50% chance that it'll land on heads and a 50% chance that it'll land on tails. It doesn't matter how many times it lands on tails in a row. So I think in my example, I used it. Landing on tails six times in a row, it's still a 50% chance on the seventh occasion that it'll land on heads or it'll land on tails. It could land on tails 50 times in a row. It would still be a 50% chance of it landing on heads or tails on the 51st toss of the coin. Now if we take the casino example, if I've gone on a hundred pound downswing and I've lost on my last 49 offers, does this mean on the 50th offer that I'm gonna do, I'm no, you know, I'm due a big massive win to compensate me for all these losses that I've been taking and this big downswing that I've been on. Of course it doesn't. The 50th offer that I'm doing on these casino offers has a positive expected value of £6.50. I should expect to make £6.50 on that 50th offer. Irrespective of the fact that I've lost £100 on a downswing and I've lost the vast majority of offers, each spin that you do or each hand that you do is completely independent and it's completely irrespective of the last one that you do. EV and variants have completely no memory whatsoever. Now if you was to get a big win on that 50th offer that you were doing or maybe it was the 51st offer, that big win would be completely irrespective of the fact that you've been on a downswing and that you've been losing a lot of offers. You just simply got lucky on that offer and you made more profit than the expected value. Now you're probably able to see where I'm going with this, that people love patterns. They love finding patterns where they don't exist. So with a toying cost, you know, if it had landed on tails six times in a row, surely the seventh time would be a, a heads, right? Because it's landed on tails six times in a row. The seventh time must be something different. Or with the casino example, if you've been going on a massive downswing, surely the next offer you do, or the next few offers you do, are gonna result in a big win to put you back above expected value. And if we use the real world example, the car example, of course if we see four cars in a row and they're all the same make, it's, it's really bizarre and it's a really weird coincidence, but it is literally just that. It's just a bizarre coincidence, which has no correlation with anything that would have happened to you in that day. So if you got lucky in that day, you found money on the floor, you got a pay rise at work, whatever it is, that those facts are completely independent of the fact that you saw these four red cars and it was just a really weird coincidence. So what I'm trying to get across is that human beings love patterns. We all do it, we all love to find patterns, we all love to find correlations. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of the time, we're looking for patterns and correlations what aren't actually there, and this is really prevalent in match betting specifically with variable offers specifically the casino offers the uh, the two up offer and the extra place offer now this is not good this sort of psychological bias and psychological mentality that human beings have is not good when you're doing match betting and when you're doing match betting offers which come with variants if we look at casino offers the easiest thing to do is sort of say okay i've got some free spins they're never going to give me anything they're never going to let me win any money it's just free spins to suck me in or you know, if you've been going on a downswing, it's very easy to say. This doesn't actually work. All this, uh, all these casino EV stuff and RTP stuff is just is not real and it doesn't exist. I've actually seen people say that on, on various different comments on other different videos. 
Um, I don't think it was on this channel, but you can see how these psychological flaws and these psychological biases impact people's ability to see things in, in a realistic standpoint. You know, the fact that someone would say that RTP and EV aren't actually real and they're not actually real things and they're just things people are making up is completely ludicrous, but you can see how these flaws and these biases impact people to think in a certain way, which obviously isn't correct. Now with the top offer, specifically with the full turnaround strategy, so the full turnaround strategy is if the team go two goals up and then the, you don't cash out essentially. The team what were two goals down, pull it back level and then ends as a draw or the team what were down win the match. A lot of variance comes with this offer, specifically the full turnaround strategy and people generally don't like variance as I've been touching on throughout this video. And if you don't understand football, you don't understand that there's only two and a half goals on average what are scored per game and the fact that you're going to get one of these full turnarounds is super, super unlikely. It's very easy to say, oh, you know, it's not, it's not real, it never happens, it's not going to be profitable, and sort of disregard it as not profitable and not an edge within match betterment, which, of course, it is an edge. You get this with a, uh, the cash-out strategy as well, which I do recommend, over the full turnaround strategy, because obviously you are going to be dealing and fighting with the fact that you're going to be getting gubbed by Bet365 at some point. You get variance with that as well, and if you go on a losing streak, let's say five, six, seven games, it's very easy to say, this doesn't work, it's not going to work, it's going to make me lose money, I'm going to stop doing it, when in fact, all that's happening is you're on a negative spell of variance, and you can still be profitable, and you still will be profitable, you just got to fight through this variance and this negative variance, which doesn't feel good on a psychological level, of course, because human beings don't like this kind of thing. Fight through it, and ultimately you'll be profitable, but the urge and the temptation might be to find a pattern and a correlation this isn't working, I'm losing lots of money here, it doesn't work, I'm going to stop it. When in fact it does work, you're just on a negative spell of variance. The third example would be the extra place offer. Now this one is super confusing, you know, there's a lot of confusing aspects to it. It all stems down to the fact that you can't uh, work out the implied probability of a horse landing in an extra place with the, the information you've got on the extra place matcher. Now with that, you obviously get a lot of ambiguity of whether you're taking a positive EV or whether you're taking negative EV. And a lot of the time, it isn't correlatable. Obviously, if you've got something which is a free bet on a horse landing in fourth, it's positive EV, or it's more than likely going to be positive EV. Whereas if you've got something what's costing you 10 quid for a 12 pound extra place profit, it's probably negative in expected value. But if you're taking really high matches all the time, so 96%, 97%, 98%, and you're always taking high matches, which by proxy, of course, will give you a small qualifying loss and a big extra place profit in relation to that, it's very, very likely that you are taking positive EV with your extra places. Now, if they don't hit for you and you go on a long losing streak, like 15 losses in a row, which is very much possible with extra places, it's very easy again to find a pattern and a correlation what doesn't exist and say, this doesn't work, this isn't positive EV, I'm being lied to, I'm not going to make any profit from this, I'm going to stop it. When in fact, you're just on this negative spell of variance, when if you would have just kept going for another few extra places, you might have had that big profit, which would put you way above expected value. So what I'm trying to get across in this video is that variance and maths is very, very prominent in match betting. It's not prominent in the free bet stuff because that's very basic, it's very lineal, it's very uh, arbitrary stuff. But when you, you dive into the variable stuff, specifically the two-up offer, the extra place offer, and very, very specific on casino offers, you will get this variance and it's hard for human beings, as I've been touching on, to deal with this and we're finding patterns all the time that don't exist. So what I would say, if you are thinking about doing the casino offers or you're you know, a little bit downhearted that you're not hitting some two ups and extra places, is really try and understand the process, what you're doing. If you're doing casino offers, read about them, watch my videos, I've got a blog post on my website, read and understand how they work and really come to grips and have a full understanding that this is reality, this is how slot machines work. If you're reading it and you don't agree with the facts, because it's not going to be very intuitive for you to start doing it when you're not even invested and you're not even believing in the process even though of course it's based on maths and it does work but you do find that people get a little bit twitchy when it comes to money and de decision making with money. Extra place offer, you gotta understand that it's rare for a horse to land in an extra place, it takes time and it takes you know lots of energy and lots of good psychology is what I'm trying to say there. So you've got to understand that process, you've got to accept that you're going to lose on the vast majority of your extra places 
and just be able to deal with that basically. The top offer isn't that variable if you're going for the cash out strategy. I'll leave a video at the end of this video if you do want to check out how to do the cash out strategy and make some big profits from match betting. But the cash out strategy and the full turnaround strategy come with different levels of variance. Now if you're going for the full turnaround strategy, obviously you need at least four goals. And if you're going for the cash out strategy, those two goals of the two and a half goals have to be distributed exactly to one team. So you can see it's not always going to hit for you. You're going to get different teams of different abilities playing each other and it's not strictly limited to you and your emotions. It's completely irrespective of that. And it's all about taking a positive EV and trusting the maths and trusting what you're doing. So really understand what you're trying to do is what I'm trying to get at. And once you do understand it, you can then start the process. And then that's only half the job. You've got to actually be able to deal with it on a psychological level. You've got to be able to deal with the downswings and the negative psychology you may get from lots of losing offers. But once you do that and once you accept that, it'll become more and more easy to become profitable with these highly variable offers when you match betting. If you enjoyed this video, do tap the like button. And if you want to see that two-up video I was talking about, I'll pop it up on screen now. Cheers for watching this video, guys. I'll see you soon.